Hey all, Brie from the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I have got a gift for you this holiday season. If you love the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I mean love the No Guilt Mom podcast, then tell us about it. Leave us a review and you can be entered to win a No Guilt Mom gift card. All you have to do is leave a review, take a screenshot, and then simply go to noguiltmom.com forward slash review to enter our giveaway for a free No Guilt Mom gift card. Simply for telling us what you think about the podcast. It is amazing. But don't delay. Get right on this as we're going to be giving away that No Guilt Mom gift card on December 21st. So get right on over and visit noguiltmom.com forward slash review. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by my co-host, Bree Tucker. Why, hello, hello, buddy. How are you? It is a... It is the end of the week. And it's also, like, I know that we mentioned in our episode, it's close to the holidays. So it is a time where, like, your brain is half on or half mush. I'm not sure how you want to look at it either yeah. way. It's, it's, it's funny because like my brain is half mush my being, my husband's been out of town all this week on a work trip. And so my kids are pretty self-sufficient, but just having to manage everything on my own, there's definitely a hit in brain power. Being but taken. you know what? We did talk about this, obviously, uh, well, not, not obviously to the audience, but obviously to you and me, we talked about this off camera about how at the beginning of the week though, you were talking about how you felt like it was you didn't realize how much time you spent trying to keep track of his time and, yeah. and doing things for him that you were thinking it would be an easier week. Mm -hmm. And now that it's at the end of the week, it, it, how was it? It's It was okay. Everything was okay. But usually he's my tap out when things get way too emotional and having a oh. teenager, like it's really emotional, emotional every day. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't have that tap out and that's really what exhausted me. But I, I think after this week, I am going to worry less about him. I mean, he doesn't want me worrying about him. I know that for like, because we've talked about this, <laughs> but it's just a habit I have. And I think I can just let go and make sure I'm focused on me and what needs to be done. And it's all good. It's all okay. That's fantastic. It's a hard time anytime anyone has no tap out with their teenage daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say daughter because in my case, I have a son and a daughter and I would definitely say my daughter is a lot more involved with the emotional end of things than my son is. Not well, that he's not emotional. He just, he doesn't suck as much out of my cup as my daughter yeah. does. But yeah. I love her. I love them both, but it's a lot of stuff out of the cup. Yeah. Well, when my son was younger, it used to be him who had like all the attention needed to be given to him. And now he's like, not... I wouldn't say like he's totally independent and doesn't need me at all. But again, he doesn't need as much for my cup. I think that's a good, good way right? to explain it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So our guest today is actually great that we're on the subject of daughters because mm -hmm. she helps moms of teenage athletes, particularly girls. Her name is Brianne Smedley, and she is a certified female athlete elite performance coach who works to empower and enable female athletes to cultivate true confidence, unlock their potential, and level up their performance across all aspects of their lives. And she's passionate about helping sports moms strengthen their athlete's daughter's mental game. So she stops beating herself up after mistakes and starts believing in herself as much as her mom does. And I laugh a little bit because you will see how this well, we interview so just much goes about that. right into that and <laughs> perfectionism. So we hope you enjoy our interview with Brienne. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids, and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible, and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. I want to talk to you about... Starting like as a competitive athlete, I'm assuming you started in high school with athletics. Is that right? Yeah, I started probably more, more like middle school. I was, you know, very competitive in a lot of sports, but volleyball was like my main sport. That was the one that I 
fell in love with in high school, got really serious. I was basically playing year round. So yeah, that was like my main sport. Did you have the experience where you were uh, basically in school and then in the sport and it took up most of your free time outside of school? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, my story around athletics and competition, it like, you know, it, it started as a love and then it became something that was all all consuming to the point where when I was a senior, I was a highly recruited athlete. I was getting a lot of offers to play at the next level. And it was kind of this idea of, you know, where's, where's Brie going to play? Not like, is she going to play? It, I just felt like it was, you know, everybody else's expectations on me. And actually my senior year, after, after my senior season, I decided to quit. I was like, this is too much. This is, you know, taking up my whole life, my whole identity. Looking back now, I know exactly what it was. I was dealing internally with a lot of expectations, pressure, confidence issues. I felt like I had to perform always. I couldn't make any mistakes. And I just didn't know how to deal with the normal things that athletes deal with. You know, like all athletes face mistakes, pressure, expectations, nerves, like that's a common thing when you're an athlete. And Mm -hmm. I just thought I was the only one and didn't know how to deal with it. So I was like, it's better for me just to quit and like duck out of this than to be at the next level, have to deal with all this, let people down. And so I did. Um, Now you're like, wait, but you played in college. How did this happen? Yeah. No, well, you, you've touched on something so important and that's the confidence Mm -hmm. issue. And that's, I see the confidence issues right now with my daughter. I remember acutely the confidence issues that I went through in high school. Like I was a high school swimmer and Mm -hmm. sometimes I felt that it was like not even worth trying if everybody else was better than me. Did you ever encounter anything like that? Yeah, it was you know, and now doing the work that I do, I see a lot of this perfectionism tendency, this all or nothing. It's not worth it to even try if I'm just going to get beat out or she's going to be better than me, or I'm going to make mistakes. Or I'm going to fail. It's, it's better just to not even do it. <laughs> and, you know, that's, I totally saw that coming out. Obviously that, that basically made my decisions for me when it came to that point of like, Hey, are you going to continue with the sport you love? And it's like, no, because I could fail basically. And if I'm going to go down that road and be a disappointment in my mind, then I'm just not going to do that. So yeah, of course. I think that that's something, it's a good point there that, that fear of, if I'm not the best, if I'm not perfect at Mm -hmm. it, then I'm going to completely let everybody down. Even though nobody's ever said that to you. Nobody's ever like, right. (laughs) Nobody ever said, Brie, you you better be a good volleyball player. Like that's it. If you're not like number one, Mm -hmm. we don't love (laughs) you. <laughs> that was exactly. never said, but yet we all have that thought process. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, I had that same one growing up too. Like I wasn't sporty, but I was really competitive in music. And unless I knew I was going to like hammer that tryout, I didn't even try. And if I did, then I was going to be the best at everything. And it, like you said, it would just consume your whole personality. And it's, where is that in between? Right. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what you focus on is helping everybody find that in between because it's scary. Did you ever have a hard time taking constructive criticism because you felt mm-hmm. like I'm speaking from personal experience and from what I see with my daughter, yes. I could not ask people how I could improve because if I asked them, I felt like they would just say, oh my gosh, you suck as a swimmer. Why are you even doing this? Basically the Simon Cowell of coaches, you know, <laughs> that was my fear. Did you ever have that fear of feedback and criticism in your sports life? Yeah, I really did. And again, that hits on um, when we teach moms and athletes about perfectionism, it's kind of like hitting those, those themes. We kind of teach in, in stuff like common things that athletes struggle with, perfectionism, nerves, anxiety you know, never feeling good enough. These are just common things coming back from mistakes. And that one would fall into the perfectionism bucket where it's like feedback is seen as um, like, you're just telling me I'm the worst person ever. And we see this when our, when athletes, and this is very common, attach their identity to their sport and their mm-hmm. outcomes with their self-worth. And there's sneaky ways that, um, that we as parents, I mean, we have the best intentions, but we actually are re- reaffirming this in our athletes. And like you oh, said, no. no one told me. Yeah, no one told me like, hey, Brie, like you are a volleyball player and that's all you are. And if you don't perform out there, like, you know, we don't love you. But guess what? I got a ton of praise 
when I did well. I got a ton of mm-hmm. praise when I got the most kills. I got a ton of recognition. I got a ton of focus. I got a ton of attention when I was doing those things. And so subconsciously, that is what we put into our brains as athletes, you know, as young, impressionable athletes. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we connect. When I do good things out there, I get recognition. So that is where, you know, that that connect comes. And as parents, we can actually be intentional with where we shift our focus to help our athletes not have that identity crisis there. That's, that's interesting because as parents, you know, you're told, oh, we should boost our kids and self-esteem and really tell them when they're doing well, because Mm -hmm. that helps. But like what we teach also at No Guilt Mom is like, it really all depends on where we put the praise and it's always effort versus innate ability. Uh, Mm -hmm. because that's the only thing that could be really improved on or really worked on. (laughs) And it's funny that you mentioned all the perfectionism thing, because I'm like, maybe some of my own perfectionism (laughs) qualities are coming out here because that's all I'm asking you about. Yes. I know. You're like, wow. Okay. We're in this bucket again. Okay. Yeah. You're like, we're in perfectionism again. Okay, cool. Cool. So, so I'm curious, what are some things that we can do? Like what, how can we shift that praise or that positive reinforcement to a place where it's actually more helpful and they don't see it as conditional. We'll be right back after a quick break. Hey all, Brie here, and I wanted to share one of my favorite gifts to give during the holiday season, a StoryWorth book. It is the most amazing gift ever. StoryWorth is an online service that lets you create a special and unique gift of someone's story. I've given StoryWorth books to both of my parents, and it has been their favorite gift, hands down. And did I mention, it is so easy. StoryWorth emailed my parents questions every week that I handpicked from their massive list of questions that they have. All my parents had to do was open their email and answer them. That easy. I asked my dad questions like, did you have any rules that you set for yourself as a parent, which you immediately broke? And he did. I even asked both of my parents, are you more like your mom or your dad? And they shared a lot of really amazing qualities that I didn't know about my grandparents at the time. Then at the end of the year, StoryWorth compiles all of their answers, puts them into this gorgeous book that covers everything. My parents love showing us their books and I personally love getting a chance to read them. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love, a thoughtful and personal gift from the heart that preserves their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash NGM and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash NGM to save $10 on your first purchase. My son is playing a game right now on his computer where he's a thief and the cops are after him. So I'm so excited about this new app, Give As We Grow, where instead of being the quote unquote bad guys, kids are practicing giving back. That is so cool, Joanne. I really wish that there was something like this when my kids were younger that got them excited about giving back to others and helped them build a better understanding of what it really means to volunteer. Give As We Grow is the first of its kind free educational mobile app for children ages 8 to 11 that teaches kids via fun, service-focused mini game quests to tap into their unique talents and interests to help others. And did you know that studies show that there is a biological connection between generosity and happiness and that volunteering improves people's physical and mental health? I mean, kids who volunteer typically do better in school and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. And that is something that I think we all want for our kids. Ready to spark a new movement in generosity? Find and download Give As We Grow for free in the App Store for Android and iOS. And for resources for the whole family, visit giveaswegrow.org. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like you know, you guys have, have nailed it, right? We are shifting two things that are in their control. So there's kind of two, two ways that we teach moms, how they shape their athlete daughter's confidence. And that's through providing the opportunities and through shaping the environment and providing the opportunities. We're pretty good at that, right? Like we give them the physical training that they need. We sign them up for the sports they want to play, take them to practice. And then also though, the opportunities for them to develop the mental side of their game and the confidence. And so that's kind of like what we can provide for athletes. But then shaping the environment is actually where we move the needle most. And so we talk about, we shape the environment for our daughters through what we say to them, our verbal communication and our nonverbal communication. So what we're modeling for them. So Joanne, when you were like, my perfectionism might be showing up in my day, you know? Yes, there is a touch. Like, come on, we've got to look at ourselves and look at like our triggers, look at our past history with our sport and other things, even our trauma to see how that might be showing up in our athlete. But when it comes to that verbal communication, 
you know, you hit it on the head, shifting from the outcome to what's in their control, shifting from their stats, their accolades, all of those things to what the process was that got them there, because that's what's in their control. You know, it sounds like I'm preaching to the choir here. And so we, you know, we say, yes, like, we don't, it's not like we're going to ignore, like, oh my gosh, you got, you scored like eight goals this, you know, this game, like, obviously that's phenomenal, but can we, and as I'm needing to tell moms when you're sitting on the sideline, take some mental notes. Like you can put a note in your phone, watch the things that your athlete did that weren't just goal scored. Was she getting available? Was she encouraging her teammates? Was she hustling when she lost the ball? Did she not give up when it could have been easy to do that? Was she taking coaching well? Like those things lead to the outcome, like in, in very big ways. And so then it's like, oh, great game. You know, how do you feel like you did? We have a whole kind of post game thing that we do. What I noticed was you were taking coaching so well, like your coach was telling you this and you were nodding your head, you're making eye contact. It was so cool. And, you know, I know you've worked hard for this, like that you must be so proud of yourself. So bringing it back, turning that in, that lens inward. So that's kind of the first one. And the second one is more of a long game and that's icing their positive innate qualities. So we say, okay, find what her PIQs are. And those are just like what make her her because we want to separate who our athlete is from what they do, right? She is not just volleyball. She's not just soccer. She's not just dance. You know, mm -hmm. she's so many other things. And so we want to be constantly just in the daily life, like pulling out those positive innate qualities and what we love about our daughters that aren't related to her sport. So that's where we start when we start talking about this with moms. Yeah. Yeah. I love it because it's a really hard thing to shift because like is, yeah. I grew up and like you probably grew up and Brie grew up having that praise where it's like, oh my gosh, you're so good. Oh my gosh, that was so beautiful. Oh, that was such a good performance. And the first thing I find that I want to say to my daughter is those same things. That's what immediately pops into my head. And it's sometimes hard just to step back and really think about, okay, how do I praise the effort here versus praising just the outcome? Right. Because mm -hmm. it's like you just said, it's what you see that you want yeah. to be like, oh my gosh, you have so much talent. You have so much skill, but sometimes mm -hmm. I can go the exact opposite direction of what we want. <laughs> Yeah. Cause then it's like, I remember one time and again, all athletes are different and what they're motivated by, but we do know this to be true that athletes, you know, tend to, especially those that lean towards perfectionism tend to attach their identity to what they do. But I remember once I had like one of the best games of my high school career, I had, you know, like 20 kills or something like that. It was, it was so, so good. And after the game, instead of being excited, I was like, how am I ever going to do that again? Yes. You know, it was oh, just no. this, like, yes. You know, you already felt like you peaked, man. Yeah, yeah. I was like, there's <laughs> like 15, 16. Yeah, exactly. That, but I can totally identify with that. I have had yeah. feelings like that after massive successes where you're like, well, that's it. Now I have to compete with it. And the bar is just raised even higher. Yeah. Man. Yeah, exactly. So it's finding that balance of like constantly. Yeah. We want our athletes to be improving and to be getting better and those outcomes improving, of course, but we also at a deeper level, want them to be satisfied with their performance, satisfied with who they are, satisfied with the work that they're putting in the goals that they're setting, like all of that, that comes through the process of getting better. You know, that's what keeps them, them going. Not this like, all right, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm done <laughs> because I've gone as far as I can go. Yeah. Well, it's interesting for athletes who keep winning and keep experiencing good results. In my research before this interview, I found a quote that you said after a game and you said, as a coach, I really like well-timed losses. As we were going through the season and rolling along, I was like, when's our adversity going to come? That was it. That gave us an opportunity to dig a little deeper. So can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about what loss does to kids when they're an, an athlete? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. You pulled up that quote. So we, yeah. uh, it's from this season. I also coach a high school volleyball team. And we, we won state, we won state last year, we won state this year and this year, and they were completely different seasons. And this season we were, you know, coming in as defending state champs and we were rolling along. We were not getting hit with a lot of tough challenges. And I'm like, this is a problem, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we, as, as good as winning is winning doesn't solve everything. Winning doesn't cure everything. It, it doesn't. And I was like, we, we've got to hit some, I mean, we were creating some adversity for ourselves with some of the internal team dynamics that we had going on, but you know, we needed something, we needed that challenge because it's really easy to be the athlete that you say you want to be. It's really athlete or easy for our, our kids to be like, yeah, I want to be this like, you know, positive teammate and I want to work really hard and then you're winning. And it's like, yeah, that's easy. Okay. What 
and who are you? How do you respond when things are hard, when we're, we're down and it's tough and it's really hard to be positive? That's where you get the real opportunity to prove who you are and who you want to be. And so, yeah, we lost in district championship. It was a tough loss, but I was like, sweet, this is awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, the girls were like all sad and I'm like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> They're um, like, what is wrong with you? Did you just see what happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I believe we would have not won state if we hadn't had that loss because it exposed some things in us, caused us to work a little harder in practice. There were just so many good things that came from that loss. And so, you know, shifting our focus to, hey, losses are, they teach us the most. We didn't change anything you know, with what we were doing the whole season, we didn't have to, but I knew in the postseason it was like, we're going to be challenged in much different ways and we need some adversity to, to kind of allow us to dig a little deeper. So yeah, losses are great. <laughs> what should moms do when they let their daughter right after a tough loss, or maybe like it, something didn't go the way their daughter expected that it would go? Like what's the dialogue there? Mm -hmm. Great question. Welcome to athletics. This happens all the time. The way that we describe this to moms is there are four roles in your athlete daughter's, you know, career, right? In her athletic career. And there's the coach, there's the athlete, there's the ref, and there's the parent. And you get to be one. Now, if you're the actual coach of your daughter's team, like you do, you are two things. And that's a hard line, but you're not the athlete. This is her journey. This is her experience. You're not the coach. So you're not there to be giving tips and pointers and reminders and coaching and feedback unless she's asking for it. You're not the ref. Don't be the mom that's like, ah, bad call, whatever. We've you're seen that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no. <laughs> At football games. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Yes. no judgment, you know, no judgment. Happens, but <laughs> yeah. But the parent, and as I said earlier, the parent, as a parent, you have two, two roles. You provide the opportunities, you shape the environment. And when it comes to post loss, we really have to make sure we stay in the role because we like to fix things. Parents like to be like, yep, my daughter's upset. Like she, whatever happened, whatever went down, maybe there's some, there's some tough feelings. There's, there's a lot going on and we want to swoop in and be like, don't feel like this anymore. You, mm -hmm. you did great. Stop thinking about all the things that went bad. No, this will, this will be better. And even as a coach, I was like, okay, we got to grieve this a little bit and then we can look forward. And so, you know, we teach mom a framework, moms a framework for post game and the acronym is love L O V E. And so the first part of the acronym is let her lead. So after that tough game, and really this is win or loss, but it's to kind of gauge, like, where is she at? Let her lead what she wants to do. Most athletes and most athletes in our program, when we ask them, what do you need after a game? They're like, I need space. I just need time. I just need someone to just be there and like not ask me a bunch of questions about the game and like try and fix it. And so let her kind of lead and, and judge kind of what's going to, what does she need? The O is open the space. And so we encourage moms to have like a post-competition, post-game like routine with their daughter, whether and the simplest one is like, hey, where do you want to go eat? You know, not... Let's get, let's all hash out the game or anything, but have just some sort of like simple routine that you do so that she is reaffirmed that like, you know, I am loved no matter what I did out there. We're still going to go get something to eat. It's not like if I win, <laughs> I get something to eat. If I lose, don't. Oh my God, that's um, awful. Love, <laughs> that'd be horrible. I know. Yeah. I asked about that, but I'm like, I've seen it. So it has, um, oh. yeah. I don't even I want to. Nope. Nope. That's nope. not yes. good. That's yeah. not good. So open the space and allow her to, to be there. The, the best thing is for your daughter to come to you in those situations. And so, you know, if you are peppering her with questions and you are like giving her coaching, you'd be like, well, if you would have done this, or if the coach would have done this, she's going to slowly be like, I don't want you, you know, and we want our yeah. daughters to be like, to come to us. And we want to be in that safe space. And the V is validate. And so I know it's simple, but it's like, yeah, she's going through a hard time. Validate it. Don't try and fix it. She's like, yeah, that was, that was tough. You worked really hard for that. And it wasn't how you expected it. Like that would be tough. Tell me more about it and just validate her experience. The last one is E that's encourage inward. And so for that, we, we encourage moms to, you know, ask their daughters like, Hey, do you want to talk about this? Or do you just, do you want to vent? Do you want my perspective? You know, those really good questions that help her kind of turn the gaze inward. So like, Hey, what, you know, what were your goals in that game? What didn't go well? What did go well? How were you a great teammate? What are you mm -hmm. going to do moving forward? Like those questions, instead of like shifting blame and, and, you know, everything else, just allowing her to process. So that's the framework that we do kind of overview of the framework that we teach moms for post game. We'll be right back after a quick break. 
This message is sponsored by Greenlight. It is so hard to raise kids who know how to manage money. Brie, right now, my kids are all about earning money for presents. My daughter wants to get presents for all of her friends, and my son is doing a secret Santa with his friends. Oh, I hear you. And if you're looking to raise kids that are financially responsible, we have got a lifesaver recommendation for you that you need to check out. It is Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app made for families that gives kids and teens an easy and fun way to gain financial literacy all while giving parents peace of mind. You can send instant money transfers, automate allowance, and even keep an eye on kids' spending with real-time notifications. Meanwhile, your kids can begin their journey towards financial autonomy by learning how to save, invest, and spend wisely. So sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash NGM. That's greenlight.com slash NGM to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash NGM. We're hitting that time of year where my brain gets so overloaded in December that I look for anything to make life easier. And I have to say, Brie, that Green Chef is one of those services. Yes. Green Chef is there to take away the dreaded, oh my goodness, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? You can eat clean all holiday long with over 80 weekly meal options each week featuring things like quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, or my personal favorite, the keto options. And you don't have to lose track of healthy eating habits during the holidays because every Green Chef customer gets a free session with one of their registered dietitians who can walk you through how to make clean eating work for you, which is very cool. And I have to say that I have been loving their recipes lately. They put things together I have never thought of. This week, we're trying the lemon basil caper pork with sauteed cauliflower, bell peppers, almonds, and feta cheese, my favorite. Their recipes make it so easy to support my wellness goals without skipping on flavor. For Green Chef's best deal of the year, get $250 off with code NGM250 at greenchef.com slash NGM250. That's greenchef.com slash NGM250. And don't forget to use that code NGM250 to get $250 off. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. I have a question on that. What do mm-hmm. you I, what advice do you have if when you're doing that final step, you find that your daughter is doing a lot of Oh, well, it was so-and-so's fault on the team or the coach should have said this. When they're they're constantly putting the loss or the blame on other people and you're you're seeing this pattern, oh my gosh, maybe they weren't Mm -hmm. like that before, they started doing it, but like, what's the best thing you can do to kind of help bring them back when they're like, whoa, we're focusing too much on it being everybody else's fault? Yeah, that's a great question because that's a coping mechanism, right? Right. It's them like... Ugh, it's not me. And so validate <laughs> it and be like, oh, okay. So I'm hearing you say that, you know, if the coach would have just maybe done this, it would have changed the outcome. Maybe, maybe we don't know what's, you know, but that's out of your control. So we teach athletes, you know, like in your control, out of your control, basic concept, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. yeah, what is, what is in your control though, that, that could have influenced the game, you know? And so it's kind of like, ah, I see that. What else could it be? You know? And so mm-hmm. it's just that same concept of like, you know, we don't want to just like rush it off because you know, just like us, like adults, when we're processing things, like, you know, I process things with my husband, when he's like, oh, no, stop. Like, it's not that. I'm like, wait, <laughs> but I really think that. And so it's just kind of like validating it, you know, for a moment and be like, hmm, okay, maybe. And then moving on to like, but that's not really in your control. So what's yeah. in your control that could have, you know, influenced something differently? Or what do you want to do next time? And yes, that's I do. I like that shift and I can see in many conversations where I can use that with my daughter and the blame shifting. Cause it's, it's so easy to be like, Oh no, that's not true. But I love the validate and then shifting it. I'm going to use that. It's going to be amazing. Uh, What are you on that? Oh yeah. Tell me, tell me. (laughs) Yeah. Well, just real quick, be careful moms to, I know we all have our opinions on coaches and teammates and all of that. The quickest way you can tear down an athlete coach relationship is to be like, yeah, I know that coach really does like that was a bad decision. You know, reframe from that. You can talk to your partner about that, like, but just in front of your daughter, that actually damages her, her relationship with her coach and her future success. So just, you know, you can validate and be like, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying, but don't go down the rabbit hole of being like, yeah, I know that coach, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay. I have to say from, if anyone's listening right now, that is an easy rabbit hole to go down because currently this high school season, that is the rabbit hole we've been going down with her. Well, especially she's on. Yeah. Well, especially if you think that if you feel like you truly are fearful for what that's doing to your child's self-esteem, you truly feel like it might be a toxic type situation. Now that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. This is toxic, you know, and there's, there's things, then you go down the path of like, okay, you know, again, you don't have to just like tear somebody down. You could be like, oh, yeah, let's hear the details. You know, how is this impacting you? And then you take the steps of like, you know, either your athlete talking to the coach or you talking to the coach with your athlete. And, you know, so that, yeah, of course, that's, that's different. But I mean, I think it brings up a good point. Like it can be, it can be tricky to know where that line is, right? Where, where that, like where your child might be having a a skewed perception. And so the story they're coming back to you with, is not maybe as bad as it sounds? So it can be tricky. I have a really quick question. What is a kill? What is a kill? (laughs) I'm not a volleyball girl. (laughs) A kill in volleyball is when the attacker, like the the third person to, to contact the ball, hits the ball over and it gets a point. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. There we go. I know. Okay. It is kind of like, you know, why do they call it kills? I like it though. I like it. I was just the whole time you kept saying kills. I'm like, what does that mean? Does that mean she like <laughs> right. spiked it or like, yes. I just, yeah, it's basically, I figured... yeah, you spiked it, got a point. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> what are you looking forward to that is coming up for you? Well, let's see. I am looking forward to the holidays right now we're kind of as we're as we're recording this we're going into a season of spending some more time with family we just wrapped up really successful season but my husband is the head football coach where i coach volleyball and we've got two Mm -hmm. little kiddos and it's just like an enormously busy season for those like five months and so i'm looking forward to not having all of that in our business, we've got a lot of cool things happening as well. So I'm looking forward to rebranding our podcast. We've got new offerings for moms, for teams and coaches. And so that's really fun too on the horizon. That's awesome. That is exciting. Well, it's been awesome talking with you. Thank you so much for coming on. Yes. Thank you for having me. Great questions. Loved it. <laughs> It's so funny during this interview, because I think right in the middle of it, when I was looking at the questions I was asking, I'm like, maybe I have a problem with perfectionism. I think she says that in there. Oh, another question about perfectionism. (laughs) I'm like, okay, there might be an issue here. I admit it. I admit it. But I have to admit, when I had first heard about it, I'm like, okay, I'm not really big into sports. I never really was big into sports. I played softball when I was younger, but not for like high school or anything further than that. And I did music, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to relate to Brienne. I, besides our names, I love the fact that that we have the same same name name. spelled differently, but same name. Um, but I love like everything she said was 100% same wavelength as everything that we're talking about. It's, it's about like supporting them and having the right, like when you're giving them the, the positive feedback that you're focusing on the right things, not necessarily on, you know, did you win, you know, love what you did related to winning, but talking about Mm -hmm. the effort and all those kinds of things. So I just loved it. It was so nice and refreshing to hear that thought process rather than the win, 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 win. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because my daughter came home yesterday and she was complaining about her coach. And so I'm like, okay, I am ready for this. And she was venting about her coach and, you know, bear in mind, we talk about validating feelings and how to let others talk and everything like all the time in our house. So she's venting, venting, venting. And I'm like, what's something that like you're proud of that you did right? And she turns it immediately wrong. She's like, mom, I am venting. I just want to vent right now. I don't want to think about what I'm doing right, right now. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) I was like, I tried. I tried. It'll come in later. I am sure. I am sure. But you know what? I'm so proud of her for saying that part though. Like I'm just venting because it, right. Isn't that one of the hardest things I think about being a parent in general for our kids, but especially if you're a parent of a teen girl trying to figure out what it is that they want. Like, mm-hmm. do you want to just vent to me? Do you want me to give any advice? Do you want me to distract? Do you mm-hmm. want me to agree? What is it that you're looking for from me? And I'm glad that she was able to say that. Wish it could have been a little bit softer, but that's okay. <laughs> 
It's a hard thing because sometimes she doesn't even know what she wants. So I'll ask those questions. And I mean, I think it's normal human nature. She's just like, I just want you to do what the right thing is, mom. I'm like, I don't know the right thing. You're like, in this like circumstance. Like, insider secret. We don't know what we're doing. We don't we're winging know. it. I could tell you what I think. And then she's like, no, that's not what I be. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I think that's just going to be the way of things for like the next few years. Because yeah. I was probably the same way. I do know <laughs> that as the years have progressed, every couple of months I'm calling my parents going, I just wanted to let you know I love you and I appreciate you. And I am so sorry for all the crap I gave you because now I understand. And then I go off on whatever new thing just happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and now I know what that was like for you. So thank you for being patient with me and got any advice. <laughs> Yeah. My parents would be like, listen, Brie, we're like in our 70s now. We don't have advice. You just figure it out on your own. Okay. <laughs> you can tell Mine... them the baby and the family. <laughs> Mine are like, I have no idea. <laughs> You're yeah. dealing with it still with your sister. <laughs> <laughs> and she's almost 34. <laughs> it's the joys. Well, like I just said, like, I'm still the baby. I am still treated like the baby in my family. And I actually yeah. don't mind it so much don't mind no, it so much at all you don't you no. don't mind it because i know that's a point of contention in my family it's like because the baby's treated like they can't handle things on their own like do you ever feel like so, you're treated like that so um not really what i feel like i get is a lot of a lot of would you like help would you like this and i don't see that as oh now you say it so now i'm like going like oh crap none of them believe i could do anything on my own but i actually think that it's it's a lot more of like just being supportive and being there. I, I don't know. I, it's not, it's I don't not mind really, it. I don't let me back it. it up. It's not really like in our family <laughs> that we don't think the baby can do more on their own. It's more that the baby feels that's how we feel. And so everything like that's offered for help, it's like pushback. So I will say this, I'm not called the baby. So that does help. If I oh, get yeah, called the no. baby, I'd be like, really? I'm just really, really? I'm just not using her name. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah. totally get that. But uh, yeah, so, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> how so it is. My brain has left the building. It's gone. Woo, I think it's, it's one of those. It's just, it's just one of those vibes. One of those vibes. Well, remember the best mom is a happy mom. Take care of you. And we'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who was pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. Three years ago, Brindley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brindley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription.